Ugh, look at the state of this e-waste case that I found recently. It's pretty horrible. It's rusted. It's dirty. It's got some acid damage, I think, from the batteries here on the back at the top. All in all, not the kind of thing that most people would usually use for a PC build. But this has actually given me a bit of an idea. But more on that later. Let's have a closer look at the case for now. As you can see, it's incredibly dirty. And there's some pretty bad rust down here at the bottom, which looks like acid damage from a leaky battery. Uh, one of the rails here is also slightly bent, which is not great. But it does have a PC speaker, which appears to be intact. So every cloud and all that. One of the other good things is that the front of the case actually looks pretty good. Um, it's mostly complete and there's no cracks or uh, anything like that in the plastic. So this will probably clean up really nicely. Also, the back of this case is actually in pretty good condition and that rust damage that we saw on the motherboard uh, tray hasn't rusted through at least, so that's a good thing. However, you can see here that there's actually some pretty extensive damage from the rust. Um, so hopefully when we get rid of that, the metal underneath will still be in pretty good condition. So at this point you may very well be wondering why I'm wasting your time with this and why I don't just throw this case away and buy a better one. Well, that's kind of my idea, you see. These days, finding or building yourself a nice retro PC can be pretty challenging. The days of stumbling upon a whole computer in good condition at your local charity shop are pretty much over. And even if you do find a nice machine on eBay or similar auction site, the prices being asked can often be ridiculous, with rare hardware like 3DFX cards for example going for hundreds of dollars. So that got me thinking, what kind of retro PC can I build for free, or for next to nothing? A machine that can still give an enjoyable gaming experience but that won't break the bank or that requires waiting for ages for the right hardware to come up at the right price. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. I'm going to use a bunch of components that I got either for free from friends and family who didn't want them anymore, or stuff I found as e-waste, like this case. Basically, we're going to look at hardware that is perfectly capable, but not very desirable, and therefore not worth very much, even to the vintage PC community as a whole. In part two of the video, I will also look at some components that I did pay a little bit of money for that can be added into this PC just to boost its performance a little bit. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I decided to do with this case before anything else was to blow it out with the air compressor. This is just to get rid of as much of the dust and the dirt as possible. And as you can see here, there's quite a lot already just being blown around by the compressed air. Once the case was cleaned up a bit, I removed the front cover of the case. And then I set about removing the switches from the front panel. Next, I had to remove these little feet on the case in preparation for repainting. And then likewise with these little standoffs for the motherboard, which I unscrewed using a pair of pliers because they were quite tight. I then also removed the hard drive cage. And here's the case stripped. Now we just have to get rid of all this dirt and rust. So in order to remove the worst of the dirt, I put the whole thing in the bath and scrubbed it with this cleaning liquid and a scourer but I wouldn't recommend doing this because it actually scratched my bath quite badly. It worked really well though, and this actually got rid of pretty much all the dirt. So the next step was to take it into the garage and try and get rid of some of that rust. So now that this case is clean, I can have a go at removing some of this rust. The first way that I thought of doing this was to use a drill bit and this sort of circular sandpaper attachment on the end of it. So let's have a go with this and see how well this cleans up the rust. Now the correct way to do this would actually be to use a sandblaster, but since I don't have a sandblaster and that having this case sandblasted professionally would cost way more than it's worth, I'm afraid I'm just going to have to stick to good old fashioned hand tools and elbow grease to get this off.
At this point I had to switch to this circular steel brush attachment because I couldn't get into the corners very well with the last one. I was initially worried that this might score or scratch the metal very badly but it turns out that it didn't actually do that at all. Besides, since I'm going to paint this anyway, I don't think it matters very much. So finally for all the rust that I couldn't reach with the drill, I'm going to use this handy uh, rust off rust remover. This is a great product that I really like. It's basically just a liquid that you paint on with a paintbrush into all the little corners and this should help get rid of the remainder of the rust. Once the rust remover had been on there for about 15 minutes, I washed it off with a hose. And then threw the whole lot in the dishwasher for a nice clean. Once all the pieces were clean and it dried, I decided to spray it with this silver zinc galvanizing spray paint. I wanted something that would give a similar finish to what it had out the factory, and this I think would probably do that. So let's give it a go and see how it comes out. I also sprayed the rest of the chassis with the same stuff. And here we are now that the painting is done and dried. It looks pretty much as good as new. This paint worked really well and the finish is close to what it would have been when it came out of the factory. I'm very happy with it overall. You can see here that even though we removed the rust, the metal here is still a bit scarred, but uh, there's nothing major. It's still perfectly strong and this is going to be under the motherboard anyway, so you're not going to see it. And as you can see, the outside of this case has been pretty much transformed from a rusty piece of e-waste junk to something that actually looks half decent. So here's the completed case after it's been reassembled. I decided to respray the side panels as well and even though they came out very nicely the color of the paint that I used is a tiny bit yellow I wasn't expecting it to be this yellow it was meant to be more cream but anyway overall I'm still very happy with this in fact it turns out the case came out so nicely that even the chicken outside wanted to come inside and have a look and yeah it turns out she was pretty impressed with my handiwork so there we go guys who says vintage computers can't get you chicks Okay, so now that the case is done, we can have a look at what parts we are going to be putting in this computer. Like I said, this is going to be mostly an e-waste build. I'm going to try build it out of parts I found for free or nearly free. And one of those is this AMD Asus motherboard and CPU. This is an Asus A7V133VM. This is a socket 462 board and it came with this Duron 1 gigahertz or 1000 megahertz CPU. Again, not very exciting motherboard or chip, but it's something you can probably find for free or very cheap because it's not very sought after by collectors. Having said that, it should still make a pretty good retro PC. One interesting thing is that it has an onboard S3 Savage 4 GPU like this one here. This is a dedicated S3 Savage 4 32 megabytes card and it will be interesting to see just how much faster or slower this is than the onboard version. Even though they do technically have the same chip. So that's an interesting test that we can maybe do later. Then for networking we're going to go with the old Realtek 8139 PCI LAN card here. This is just a generic uh, LAN card. This motherboard hasn't actually got onboard LAN. It's got uh, onboard everything else, uh, sound and graphics, but not onboard LAN. So uh, we're just going to use this LAN card there for that. Then we're going to just stick with the standard CPU cooler from AMD. And then a 1.44 megabytes, three and a half inch floppy drive. That's pretty standard. A HP Star 80 gigabyte IDE hard drive. 
and then this standard optical drive here, a uh, 56 speed uh, RDE CD-ROM drive. And then finally a simple ATX power supply. In this case it's a 230 watt generic power supply which should be more than enough for this PC. So yeah, these are all the parts basically and I'm, that I've technically got for free or next to nothing from somewhere. They are not expensive parts at all, so this is a good test of what can you build for virtually nothing. So now that I have all my parts selected, I want to test that they actually work before I put them in the case. And the first step there is to put this heatsink on the CPU. So I'm going to put a little bit of this thermal grease on here. That might be a little bit too much actually. And then I'm just going to go for the standard AMD stock cooler and fan here, which I've got with the board. So once this is installed, then we can try to power this board up and just make sure that it works before going any further. And now for the moment of truth. And awesome. Well, it seems to be working perfectly fine and everything's being detected, so that's a good sign. So now we can start putting all these parts into the case. I'm just going to place the motherboard in here uh, initially just to see where the motherboard standoffs have to go and see which holes line up and whatnot. And then I can start screwing in the standoffs. I have this set of really small little spanners which is incredibly useful for doing little jobs like this. Uh, it turns out this one's exactly the right size for installing motherboard standoffs, so it's really useful. And then just one last step before putting the motherboard in is to install this IO shield, which has to be screwed in from the back with three screws. And then it's just a simple matter of screwing the motherboard down onto the motherboard backplate. Now we're just going to install this USB expansion card at the back of the computer. This board obviously has USB support, but it hasn't got it built into the I.O. part of the motherboard like you'd find on modern motherboards. So you have to install this little expansion card at the back. Next up is putting the uh, power supply in and installing that. It's very simple. It's basically just held in place by four screws. Hook up our power to the motherboard. Install the Realtek PCI LAN card. And then onto what I'm sure is everybody's least favorite job in PC building, and that's hooking up all the little plugs for this front edge panel. Install the hard drive. And then the floppy drive. The seed your own drive. Finally, not forgetting to hook up all my data and power cables to my hard drive and floppy drive. Right, let's see if it boots. Sweet, all looking good. And I'm just checking the BIOS here to make sure that everything is working and being detected correctly and uh, it all seems good. Now obviously at this point there's no operating system on this hard drive so we're going to have to go ahead and install one and I think for this build I'm going to go for Windows XP because it's a slightly later motherboard this, it's from about 2001 so I think Windows XP would be a nice match for this computer. Unfortunately when I went ahead and tried to install Windows XP it told me that it didn't have enough RAM and then promptly shut the computer off. 
But once I had installed some more RAM in the computer, the Windows XP installation went off without a hitch. But anyway, that's pretty much going to be it for this part of the video. In part 2, I'll have a look at the gaming performance of this machine and see what you can expect from using onboard graphics, which are usually never good, but we'll have a look. And then I'll also go into some fairly cheap upgrade options that you can potentially use in a system like this that will boost its performance without you having to spend a fortune on rare and highly sought after retro hardware. So until then, cheers guys.